Hi Algebra 2, this is Unit 6, Lesson 4, and today we're going to be talking about factoring trinomials, which is something that most of you are pretty good at. So we'll do a quick review. So a trinomial has three terms, hence that prefix tri, so ax squared plus bx plus c. And you really need to be good at foiling, and you need to be good working with signed numbers in order to be successful at this. So without using a calculator, let's um, write the product in simplest ax squared plus bx plus c form. So we're going to FOIL this. First, outers, inners, last. So the first term's 3x times 5x is 15x squared. The outside terms, 3x times 7 is 21x. The inside terms, 2 times 5x is 10x. And the last terms, 2 times 7 is 14. You're basically just multiplying, you're using the distributive property twice to do this. Just make sure you're multiplying everything um, times everything else. Um, you're always going to get four terms, and those two middle terms can be combined together. So it's 15x squared plus 31x plus 14. Okay, so try the next two. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x, and negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Again, you get four terms, and those two middle terms can be combined together. So you get 4x squared plus 4x minus 15. All right, so factoring is basically just going to be the reverse of this. We're going to start with the trinomial and work our way backwards and get the two factors. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x, negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Those two middle terms can be combined together, so 5x squared minus 14x plus 8. Okay. Uh, consider the trinomial 6x squared minus 35x minus 6. Below are four guesses of how this trinomial factors, so we got to figure out which one is actually the answer. Um, so they all 3x squared times 2x is 6x squared. x times x is x squared, so that one obviously isn't working. Okay, x times x is x squared, no good. 6 times x is 6x squared, so that's a possibility. 3x times 2x is 6x squared, that's a possibility also. All right, the last number is negative 6. So how do I get that last number? 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, all right? 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Okay, so that one does not work to give me that last term. So basically, it's the middle terms that are really go I have to look at in this one. So if you look at 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x and 2 times 2x is positive 4x. Well, if I combine those two middle terms, that gives me a negative 5x, but I'm looking for something that gives me a negative 35x. So let's try the this one right here. 6x times negative 6 is negative 36x, and 1 times x is 1x. That gives me a negative 35x. So basically when you're foiling, the outside and the inside are giving you that middle term there. So this is my answer right here. If I was to FOIL that out, I get 6x squared minus 35x minus 6. Alright, so I already took you through the process. It says two of the guesses are unintelligible. That would be the second one and the fourth one because the, they weren't giving you the first term or the last term. Alright, so we basically just check the other two. Um, the easiest kind of factoring is when that leading coefficient, that a, is equal to 1. All right, so let's using a guess and check technique, technique, let's factor each of these. So I set up my two sets of parentheses. x times x is x squared. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 35 and combine together to give me a positive 2x. Now you might be adding them, you might be subtracting them, depends on the signs. If you want to write the factors of 35, you can certainly write the factors of 35. So 1 and 35, and 5 and 7, those are really my only factors. Which of those would give you a middle term of 2x? Well, the 5 and the 7 would give me a middle term of 2x. So they multiply to give me 35, 
and they combine together to give me a positive 2x. The only way they're going to give me a positive 2x if it's positive 7 and negative 5. And then just check if I was to multiply negative 5 times positive 7, it gives me a negative 35. So I did it. Okay? Uh, B right here. Again, I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. X times X is X squared. I'm looking for the factors of 24. If it helps you to list them, you certainly can list them. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Which of those would give me a middle term of 11? So again, my numbers multiply to 24, and they combine together to give me 11. Well, that would be the 3 and the 8 would give me an 11. All right? And in order to give me a positive 11, it would have to be positive 3 and positive 8. And positive 3 times positive 8, when I multiply it, gives me a positive 24. So this is something that you did back in algebra that you hopefully are pretty comfortable with. So numbers that multiply to 22 and that combine together to give me 13. Well, 2 times 11 is 22. And the only way they're going to give you a negative 13 if it's negative 2 and negative 11. So they multiply to give me positive 22, but they add together to give me negative 13x. I'll do this one down here. So x times x, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 50. Again, if it helps you to write these, you can certainly write them. Uh, 5 and 10, and I think that's pretty much it. So out of that combination of numbers, the factors of 50, which of them give you a negative 5 as a middle term? Well, the only ones that can give me a negative 5 are the 5 and the 10. How are they going to give me a negative 5 if it's negative 10 and positive 5? So they multiply negative 10 times positive 5, multiplies to negative 50, that last term, and they add up together to give me negative 5x, that middle term. So it's factoring trinomials. This is a little, um, the box right here is, is like a rule to help you to figure out. Okay, but it's really just what I've been saying. Um, that the, the last term C, those are the factors. The numbers multiply to that, and they add up to that middle term right there. Okay. Now, it's definitely harder when I have coefficients. I think the easiest thing to do is probably just to do a guess and check. These are not bad coefficients right here. So the only way I'm going to get 3x squared is to have 3x times x. Now this is a little bit trickier because the numbers multiply to 40, but they add up to 19. But whatever number that you're putting here is actually being multiplied by 3. So I really just play around with my factors to see what works. So if you think of my factors of 40, I got 2 and 20, I've got um, 5 and 8, so let's try the 5 and 8. Now I'm going to put them in the wrong spot just to show you. If I put the 8 here and the 5 here, and check those middle terms, that gives you an 8x and a 15x. Well, 8x and 15x are never ever going to give me a 19x. Alright, well let's flip flop the 8 and the 5 then. So let's put the 5 here and the 8 here. Well now, 5 times x is 5x, and 3 times 8 is 24x. Can that give me a 19x? Absolutely. It gives me a 19x if this is a positive 24x, and this is a negative 5x. So that's what they're saying by a guess and check. All right? So that's my answer right there. 2x squared. Well, the only possible way to get that is 2x times x is 2x squared. And again, I'm going to have to play around with my factors of 18. So I can try 2 and 9, I can try 3 and 6, and it's just a matter of putting them in there to see what works. Um, and this one is actually 6 and 3, because if I put 2 times 6 is 12x, and 3 times x is 3x, and that could give me a negative 15x if it's a negative 12x and a negative 3x. Okay, so I'm just doing guessing and checking. The hardest ones to do 
are when um, there is a number in front, when there's a leading coefficient in front that's not prime, because then there's a whole bunch of different scenarios that you can do, all right? But again, I generally just do a guess and check to see what is going on. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So 15x, the, the, the problem is it could be 3x times 5x, but it also could be 15x times 1x. All right, so you you know I'm going to try the 3x and the 5x. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to try the 15x and the 1x. So now my factors of 2. Now that's pretty easy. It's just 1 and 2. All right, so you got to think, do I want the, the 1 here and the 2 here? Well, that gives me 5x and 6x. That doesn't give me a 13. I'm looking for a 13. So then flip it around and try the 2 here and the 1 here. That gives me a 10x and a... 3x, well, that gives me a 13x if it's positive 2 and positive 1. Okay? And then um, 10x squared plus 13x minus 30. Again, the factors could be 2x times 5x or they could be 1x times 10x. All right? Um, actually, I, t yeah. Uh, I was thinking if I could factor out anything, but I can't because that's a 13 in the middle. Okay, so 2x times 5x, I'm just going to check it out. But then I need factors of 30, so that could be a whole bunch of different things. That could be 5 times 6, it could be 3 times 10, um, and it's just a matter of testing them out to see what works. But 5 times 6 is 30, and let's just see. This is a 25x. See, I don't worry about the signs till the end. 2 times 6 is 12x. Can 25x and 12x give me a 13x? Absolutely. If it was a positive 25x and a negative 12x, that would give me a 13x. Okay. And do I have more here to try? Nope, that was it. All right, so we'll practice these tomorrow. Show you how you can use your calculator a little bit to help you come up with those.